Uh, okay, one other, the only other stream cipher we want to mention is uh, RC4. Uh, RC4 is very different, completely different, no shift registers. It's just a lookup table. Okay, really, that's essentially, that, that's really all there is to it. It's a table. It's a table that contains all the byte values. How many different byte values are there? 256, right? 256. So it's a, an array of 256 byte values. And in fact, it's a permutation of the byte values, which means what? What's a permutation again? It's a rearrangement, okay? So every byte's in there and every byte's in there once, okay? That's it. And we scramble those things around based on the key, and then we grab a byte, you know, and we're off, off to go. We're good to go. We start grabbing bytes, and that's what we use to uh, encrypt or decrypt. That's the key stream. That's how we generate the key stream. Okay, so let's just dive right in. Here we go. Here's RC4. <laughs> There's two things we have to do. First, we have to initialize the permutation, and we do that using the key. Okay, once we've done that, then we're actually good to go to generate the key stream. Okay, so two steps. First we have to initialize, then we generate the key stream. Okay, here's the initialization. Okay, this is the, perm this is the array that's gonna hold the permutation. Okay, S is this special array. It's really the state of the algorithm. It holds the permutation of the bytes. Okay, so we start off putting a permutation of the bytes. 0 through 255, it's kind of a boring permutation, but it is a permutation, right? It's an identity permutation. Okay, this array is just gonna hold the key, okay? Now the key can be any length. That's kind of a beauty of RC4 too. You can set the key to be any number of bytes from zero through 256, okay? Zero is probably not a good choice, but 256. So okay, so suppose this is the key and you have n bytes of key. What's going on here? What's this mod n? That looks kind of ugly. What's it? It's just cycle through the bytes and keys. Yeah, and all it's really saying is, I want this array of 256 elements, right? I probably don't have 256 bytes of key. Usually you have, you know, 10 bytes of key, 12 bytes of key, something like that. So what this is saying is just take however many bytes of key you have and just keep repeating it until you get 256 bytes. That's all that's going on there. Nothing tricky. Okay. So, okay, just initialize that stuff. Okay, now here's where I actually use the key. I'm gonna use the key to scramble that permutation. Okay, notice what's going on here. I'm generating one index J using the stuff that's in the, in the array and stuff that's based on key. And I just take it mod 256 so it stays within the bounds of the array. That's all that's going on there. And this I is just going regularly. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. And I'm swapping elements. What the, heck? You know, what the heck's going on here? <laughs> well, the swapping, okay, why swap? Why do I want to swap things? Why might that be a good idea? Well, I want a permutation, right? So I have a permutation, and if I take two guys and swap them within a permutation, I still have a permutation. So by swapping, you always <coughs> maintain that property of this thing being a permutation. What about this? Well, this is just stepping regularly through the array, but this is kind of jumping around pseudo-randomly based on the key and what happens to be in the array, okay? If you look at the algorithm you use to generate a random permutation, it's very similar to this. So you're actually doing some stuff that's sort of like generating a random permutation, but it depends on the key, okay? Okay, so anyway, I've scrambled up that permutation, okay? Now I'm good to go to generate the key stream whenever I need it, and here's all I do. Um, you can write this code, right? It's just a few lines of code here. Okay, you start with this index I. Again, you just step it regularly. This guy kind of jumps around based on what's in the table at any given time. And you swap those two guys, and now you get another index, and that's what you use for your key stream. Okay? Take that element for your key stream. So the idea is this. Once you've scrambled the array, based on the key, okay, then you can generate a key stream byte whenever you need it. And this is the algorithm you use to generate the key stream byte. But not only do you generate a key stream byte, but you actually swap a couple elements in the array. 
So from the attacker's point of view, that array keeps changing, and that's really annoying. You know, you can't really get a good fix on that array because it's constantly changing as they're generating the keys for you. Okay, so anyway, I mean, that's, for, for a crypto algorithm, that's about as simple as they get, okay? It's very considered strong, it's used widely. There is sort of a technical issue. Uh, technically, you should take the first 256 bytes that come out of here and throw them away, not to use them. Uh, as long as the sender and receiver agree to do that, it will work just fine. Um, but that's kind of the only catch there. Uh, okay, RC4. Okay, final word on stream ciphers. Again, they were really popular in the past, but not so much uh, today. And it was really because of speed. Okay, you needed the hardware to get the speeds that were uh, needed to encrypt at the time, but that's not true today, okay? For most applications. Okay. Okay, what about the future of stream ciphers? What do you think? Well, okay, so I was at a conference just, this was a few years ago, I guess, and this guy, Shamir, anybody heard of this guy, Shamir? Well, okay, there's two names you need to know in cryptography, okay? Ravest and Shamir, okay? Ravest, this algorithm we just talked about, RC4, the R stands for Ravest, <laughs> okay? Shamir and Ravest, they did lots of, lots of things. Um, um, what I like to say is uh, Ravest makes them, Shamir breaks them. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that's really all you need. So, not quite, not exclusively true, but for the most part. Okay, so anyway, he's probably you know the most famous crypto <coughs> crypto analyst out there today. You know, breaks lots of ciphers. He's built some of the most famous ones as well. Anyway, he he declared the death of stream ciphers. He said that's it. You know. Nobody has any need for these stream ciphers. Just use block ciphers. You, who cares about those silly stream ciphers? Uh, but I think it's not true. I think even he would say today that's not the case. Um, and that's really because as you have more and more sort of resource-constrained devices, okay, where you're really trying to squeeze things into very small, low-powered, you know, and so on devices, these stream ciphers start to look good again. Okay, because that's what they were designed to solve, that problem where you're short on power, short on horsepower to solve, to, uh, you can't really afford to use a block cipher. And not only that, there's other potential uses. Okay, if you think of, say, trying to encrypt lots and lots of bits, say on the backbone of the internet or something like that, you just, yeah, now you're really pushing the limits as well. So in that situation, you might want to do, look at uh, stream ciphers as well. So anyway, I think you'll probably see these things make something of a comeback. Um, 